So uh, great, great to see you all here. Um, as you may have heard, uh, Apple introduced a new language uh, in June, a new programming language called Swift. Uh, I guess it was a surprise to most of you. Uh, maybe to some of you it's a, it's a revolution. Uh, for me, it was almost a revelation. Revelation because Swift is not just Objective-C with a different syntax. Swift is uh, much more. Swift comes with all these new features. Uh, it's actually like 30 years worth of new features. Um, things never seen in Objective-C before because Objective-C started in 1983. That's old, it's like me. Um, so Swift has a generic, tuple, multiple values, multiple return values, a type inference, which is really cool. So it opens a whole new world of patterns and idioms um, in your apps, in your libraries, uh, in your SDK that you can take advantage of. Um, so it's why <clears throat> when you are going to switch to Swift, you have to uh, stop thinking Objective-C and start uh, thinking Swift, maybe even dream in Swift. Uh, it's a whole new mindset to have. So I'd like to show you a few Swiftism, uh, to share a few Swiftism with you. Um, what is a Swiftism? So um, according to my own dictionary, uh, it's an idiom or pattern that is very specific to Swift and that shows uh, that best illustrates um, the safe and the concise and the, uh, explicit, uh, expressive nature of Swift and things that you cannot even achieve uh, in Objective-C most of the time. Um, with that, um, I'd like to start with the first um, of these, which is optionals. So um, optionals, you may have, is probably the first thing you see when you start Swift. And when I say the first thing you see is also the first thing maybe that you, that you face, that you fight, because uh, it's not love at first sight. Here is how the love story goes. Uh, John Sagan, you're excited. You about the announcement, you see all these new uh, features, uh, you download Xcode, you download the books, you read them, you, you figure out it's, it's, it's a great uh, uh, future. The next day, you fall in love with Swift syntax. I mean, there are no more square brackets, no more semicolons at the end of sentences, no more pointer arithmetics, and no more pointers at all. I mean, that's, that's cool. Uh, no more weird at keywords uh, introduced just for the sake of C compatibility. So maybe you're so much in love that, uh, you know, those useless keys, you don't need them anymore and you go sell them on Craigslist or something. Um, and then comes actual time when you start actually writing code, writing code in, uh, in Xcode and um, you may see this, uh, Xcode errors. I mean, it's cool because it's Swift Xcode errors, but it's still errors. Things like UI label doesn't have a text property what? Label doesn't have a text property? Sure it does. Uh, fatal error unwrapping an optional value. What, what does it mean? Uh, hey, did you mean question mark or exclamation mark? Like, I have no idea. So probably the first thing you did was just adding ethically more question mark and exclamation mark until the compiler shuts down and it's great. Well, actually, it's not that great because, you know, you get more crashes. Well, you still get crashes and while doing that, you're fighting against the compiler. You're not, you're not going to win uh, against LLVM whose logo is a dragon. Don't forget that. So what you should do instead is just keep calm and embrace optionals. So to understand fully optionals, uh, we first need to um, understand quantum mechanics. Yes. Uh, you'll see it's very easy. So this guy is Erwin Schrodinger. Um, he uh, is a ph physicist. Uh, and in, in order to illustrate a paradox uh, with particles, whereby a particle can be both, um, like can be in two states at the same time, uh, he came up with, uh, with a story, a little illustration, uh, the Schrodinger cat. So Schrodinger cat is a cat in a box, and there's some poison in the box. And the cat might be either alive or dead. But since you cannot see inside the box, you don't know what's going on inside, the cat, you should consider the cat as both dead and alive. Uh, well, with optional, it's the same thing. Optional is a wrapper around the value. You can see what's inside, and you know it's either nil or non-nil, but until runtime, you don't know, and so you have to handle both cases. So here is how optional look like. Here we have A, an optional string, and B is just a regular string. Uh, the optional string, uh, you, you can turn a string into an optional string just by adding this question mark at the end, and you can make an optional of any, anything. Optional date, optional UI button, optional whatever. Well, actually, we're not having an optional cat. 
so here, cat um, can either uh, have a value or be nil, whereas cat2 is a real cat with an actual value. And note how the question mark syntax, so the, this symbol is well chosen, because um, it somehow a question, you know, you can read it as, well, cat might be a cat or it might be nil, which means you cannot really access any property of the cat, for instance, the cat name like that, because you don't know if cat is actually a cat. So that's why in order to uh, protect uh, access to this name, you have to uh, do checks. Uh, and you can do that with the if let statement like that. Um, so if let statement allows you to you know, define this real cat variable here that is a temporary scoped variable that is actually a cat, which is why in the first branch you can do um, print the cat.name, the real cat.name, because real cat is actually a cat. And otherwise, well, the cat is, cat is dead. Sorry. Um, rather than this uh, syntax, you also have a shorter, uh, more compact syntax uh, called nil coalescing operator. It's this double question mark thing. Uh, whereby here uh, you can read it as, well, text is the name of the cat, if there is a cat, and if not, well, rest in peace. And you can even get shorter by just having uh, it like that, which means if there is no cat and hence no name, uh, text is going to be nil. So text in that case can be either nil or a string, so text is an optional string. So strings, uh, well, optional, um, you should use them whenever you need to model uh, a null state in your uh, objects. When you, whenever you really want to tell the compiler, this can be nil. And if it's not an optional, it has a value. Note how this is very different from like Objective-C or JavaScript. By default, a value is not nil, unless you have the question mark. Uh, so, so optionals are here to make your code safer, because when you think about it, it eliminates a whole kind of bugs, a whole theory of bugs. Uh, everything that is nil-related crashes, uninitialized variables, incomplete object initialization. And it also saves you from typing useless nil checks. You know, sometimes you just write nil check just because you're not really sure if it can be nil or not, but just, let's just add it just for the sake of it. But it also means whenever you need to have a nil check, it forces you to add it, but it's enforced by the compiler, and the compiler will help you and tell you, hey, here you need a nil check, so it's all good for you. There is one more thing about optional that you may have seen. Uh, it's the implicitly unwrapped optional, also known as question mark. We'll just call it question mark for the sake of it. So here, um, A is an option, is the question mark string, uh, implicitly unwrapped optional. So A is an optional, so it can be either nil or not. But the thing is that sometimes you don't want to, to have to deal with the overhead of checking whether or not it's nil, um, doing all those if let things. And because you feel confident that A is never going, going to be nil, you, you just ask this question mark. It's like if you're telling, it's, it's like, it is like you saying to the compiler, trust me, in theory this can never be nil. So there is two things wrong with that sentence, with that statement. First is you telling the compiler, trust me. You know, I don't know about you, but I prefer to trust a compiler than someone, even including myself. And the second thing is, in theory, this can never be nil. Well, you know what people say, in theory, there's no difference between theory and practice, but in practice, there is. And what it means is that if at runtime you get a nil, uh, it's actually a nil, you'll get a crash. And from what I've seen in my Swift apps, uh, there is very few crashes, but 90% of them uh, are misuse of the question mark. So basically, whenever you're using a question, uh, an exclamation mark, whenever you're using this exclamation mark, it's like you say, putting an assert uh, in, a, in your code, and uh, you should really be prepared for that. So I hope uh, those three keys are going to be <clears throat> your new best friends now for having safer and better code. Swift also has some cool stuff, uh, in, namely Swift enums. So Swift enums are much like, I mean, conceptually, you can see it as, as Objective-C enums, but it's much more powerful. To show that, to explain that, uh, let's imagine you have an app, an iPhone app with a table view and, uh, and few data loading from the network. So this table view might have four states, <coughs> loading states, error states, an error occurred and the error is displayed. Maybe uh, no items yet and a button to create or like little tutorial to add data to this list. 
And finally, <coughs> the list of items here, uh, list of books. Um, two of these states have associated data. The error state has an underlying NS error object that you fetched and that you need to somehow uh, display. And the items uh, state has a book array uh, that you need to display. Uh, so of course, one bad thing to do would be to have four Boolean flags for all of these states. You use uh, <coughs> an enum. This is much like you would do in Objective-C. Um, and you have on the side also a variable to keep track of which state you're currently in, and a variable for the data and for the error. But here the problem is that you see data and error are optional error and optional array of books. Because the error, most of the time, you are not going to have an error. So error is going to be nil most of the time, but not always. And when it is uh, not nil, you will have to do the um, checking and, and unwrap, and it's problematic. And also, maybe you're in the loading state, and nothing prevents you from accessing the, the data uh, property. Uh, same, you can access the error uh, item, the error um, object, even if you're in the empty state. So Swift comes with a nice neat syntax, a neat feature called um, associated values, whereby you associate this error in a book, uh, array of book uh, values right to the state uh, they correspond to. They are no more optional, and they are only defined in the scope of this state. Here is how you would use it, uh, a regular switch, switch case, uh, for loading an empty state, no problem. And you can see that uh, in, when you're in the error or items state, uh, there is this uh, let error and let items variable that is defined uh, just right in the scope of that branch uh, and not accessible elsewhere. So it makes sure that actually in your code, you are never going to access the items uh, array other than by doing a, sw a switch case. So it's really uh, safe for you. It helps you reduce state in your view controllers. It protects access to the data. And best of all, it's enforced by the compiler, so you're really sure you're not um, doing something wrong. For extra coolness, what you can do with enums, uh, so this is an enum we, we came up with, uh, is to add, to make it generic. So rather than adding uh, you know, specific books or specific uh, model object, you can define this type T. Uh, and pass it uh, anything, and it will be an array of any kind of object. Uh, you can use that uh, pattern for a lot of cool stuff. Uh, for instance, a generic, uh, you can imagine a generic result type, which most API should, in Swift to, should have now. Uh, so it's this kind of uh, enum, uh, enum pattern. So you've seen all those cool things in, in Swift. It's just an introduction, of course. But you see that there are really new constructs um, that you can take advantage of. Uh, and it's really different from Objective-C. And um, it opens up a whole new world. So it's not that difficult. Uh, just you know, keep calm and think in Swift. So many more uh, features uh, in Swift um, to explore. It's really great. Um, that's why I, I think that uh, not an, it's not only uh, a revolution, but really a revelation, like I said. Uh, maybe we can go as far as saying that 2014 is a new 1984. Um, it's the start of something new, I think. Uh, I see future bright. Uh, it's going to, mean going to be <coughs> exciting, and I can't wait to see what you uh, are going to do in your apps, in your frameworks, and in your SDK as a community. Thank you. <laughs>